mute. Awesome. All right, so I would like to welcome Soleil Mead. Soleil is a Google digital coach specializing in graphic and web design, brand development, engagement, strategy, and project management. Um, she is on a mission to help people really solidify their brand and bring their vision to life. Um, I'm also excited that Soleil is going to be talking today about the basics of Google Ads. Um, she's an entrepreneur herself, so I love meeting women entrepreneurs because that's what we're all about here at Webeck East. And um, I'm going to, without further ado, turn it over to Soleil. Over to you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, for all of the great work that uh, you all do for women in business. We are so powerful. So good afternoon to all of the beautiful women on the call. I'm so excited to share with you on today. We are going to be talking about the basics of Google Ads. So I want to go ahead and introduce myself and my coach assistant today. My name is Soleil Mead. And as Joyce told you all, I am the proud owner of Soleil Branding Essentials. And I also um, am your Pennsylvania Grow with Google Digital Coach. Um, the heart of me wants to see small business owners just succeed, especially women small business owners succeed. So it is my goal to help people bring their vision to life. Um, and we need tools and knowledge and education in order to do that. So that is uh, what I do. Uh, Vicki actually dropped all of my information and her information in the chat. Please don't be scared, you guys. We actually respond to your emails and your comments and your questions. Um, so yeah, feel free to email us, reach out to us if you have any questions or need anything. I will also like to introduce to you all my, I call her my Google bestie. She is the uh, Texas Grow with Google digital coach. Her name is Vicki Sepulveda. So Vicki is the owner of Crossing Bridges Consulting. Vicki has been with the Digital Coaches Program since its inception. So she is extremely knowledgeable about all of the Google products um, and how to pair it with your business and how to make them mesh. So if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one support um, with any Google product you have or even marketing and building your business, I highly recommend reaching out to Vicki. Um, like myself, we host several workshops throughout the month. Every month we have coaches all across the country. So if at any moment and point in time, you feel like there is a certain um, tool or skill set you want to learn more about, you can always visit the Digital Coaches Program website to get more information um, about the workshops that are hosted and to tap into anyone across the entire country that uh, aligns with what your need is. So I'm really excited to present to you all today. Um, Joyce has already covered a lot of the basics, such as keeping yourselves on mute while the presentation is going on. The other thing that I want to um, prepare you all for is one of the things that I love about presenting is engaging with the participants. And a lot of times when we're in a virtual space, it seems sometimes difficult, but I promise you all, Vicki and I are going to take you for a ride within this next hour and really engage with you. The chat is where you will find most of the engagement happening. That's where we want you to drop your questions. That's where we want you to respond to the prompts. We might ask you things um, like we're about to ask you if you ever ran a Google campaign ad before, and we want you to interact and engage if you can. If you are driving, please just listen and stay safe. But if not, engage with us, ask your questions, make your comments so we can make this time um, that we have together very rich. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and share a couple statistics. So 49% of shoppers surveyed said that they use Google to discover or to find a new product or item. 59% of shoppers surveyed said they use Google to research a purchase that they plan to make in store or online. What is the consensus to this? The consensus is people are searching on Google to find what they need. How many of you all have done a Google search this morning alone? Drop an explanation point in the chat if you've done a Google search already. Uh, I see a whole, right. So as consumers ourselves, we're using Google to search for what we need. So we have to keep that same mindset that 
our customers, um, our potential customers are searching for whatever you provide in your business right on Google. So today's workshop is going to make sure that you are positioning yourself to be found as the people are looking for whatever it is that you provide. So let's move on to the next slide. I want to just touch on the benefits of advertising online. So most of us might be familiar with traditional advertising. You know, we are used to seeing commercials, print, radio, and television, but the internet has changed the game and has made it um, available for us to actually advertise online. We probably spend more time online. I don't have a statistic on this, but we probably spend more time online than we do watching TV or listening to the radio every day. So when you think about the Google searches that we do, or how easy it is to pick up our phone to run a search or uh, scrolling our social media and seeing an ad. There's so much power in that. And the benefits of it is that it helps us to reach specific audiences. Whenever you create an ad online, you can measure who exactly it is that you want to see your ad. Um, you also can control when and where your ad appears and how much you want to spend. And then you're also able to measure your results. All of those being very important factors that are going to help you ensure that your product or service and your brand is being seen by who needs to see it. So let's go over the agenda for today. So first, we're going to talk about the mechanics of Google Ads, how it works. How do you actually show up in a search? How do you advertise to your potential customers? Then we're going to talk about advertising on Google, which is going to entail you setting up your Google Ads account. Then we're going to get into improving your ads. Um, Google is amazing in the fact that they have campaigns that you can run that are perfect for beginners who are just starting their um, online advertising process to those who are a little bit more skilled and want to get into more depth. Then we're going to talk about how you can measure success. One thing we don't want to do is put a ton of work into running ads, a ton of work in anything we're doing in our business, but not taking time to follow up and see how successful those steps are in our business. And then lastly, we'll do a recap and resources. We have a handout for you to recap everything and we'll answer some questions. So this by far is one of my most favorite videos that we have. And we're going to spark today's workshop by watching this video together. Everybody likes jam. Who doesn't like jam? Seriously, I dream about flavors. Trade Street Jam Company makes low sugar vegan jams for pretty much everything under the sun. Honey, do you know how many things you can do with this jam? You can make cocktails, you can put on roasted meats or veggies, oatmeal. The uses are endless. I've been a chef for about 15 years. I needed something fun to do after work. I'm not a big like TV watcher. I would stop at this like store on the way home, grab a bunch of fruit, anything like weird and exotic that they had. And I started cooking. I started jamming. <laughs> Too much. You don't like the puns. You like the bananas, honey? Yeah. My husband is my test dummy, I guess you can say. <laughs> you want some more? You like mommy's cooking? When I started Trade Street, I was selling on another e-commerce platform, and we were also selling a lot of jam in person. But COVID hit, and all the markets shut down, which freaked me out. I'm already scared about being a new mommy. And then on top of that, I'm worried about the life of my business. People started ordering specialty food online, so we immediately had to pivot and focus all of my efforts on selling online. When people go on Google and they search jam or jelly, I want them to be able to find my brand. With Google Ads, they can type those things in and I pop up. You guys, that's huge. Being able to sell on our website, it really did save us. I couldn't imagine going back to not using Google products. We went from making 2,000 jars every two months to making 2,000 jars every two weeks. Our sales increased by 1,000%. <laughs> It was crazy. I've hired four or five different contractors. Hiring feels amazing. I think it's so important for our product to have a story behind it. I think when people see a woman behind the brand, a person of color, it just really adds something to that jar other than jam. Oh, you kiss mommy, you kiss mommy. I want Zola to be able to grow up and look at me and say like, my mom did that. I wouldn't trade that for the world. <laughs>
So I always like to pause after, yes, that baby, Dr. Selena said that baby, right. And how many of us have our legacy, our children, our family, or, or a strong why behind the source of whatever we run our business in? Uh, share with me in the chat, what did you think about that recording? Were you inspired by it? Did you connect or relate to it in any sort of way? As a Black woman, I was so inspired when I first saw that video. Um, it, I love just the, she, she just seemed like a, a everyday person, but a boss that was making moves. It, it just felt so relatable. Um, and I love the statistics that she threw out there, y'all. 2,000 every two months to 2,000 every two weeks from running ads and, and infiltrating Google products into her business. And she also said she experienced a thousand percent of growth in her business. So I wish that upon all of us as we move into the remainder of the year. But I really hope that you all were inspired. And it looks like from the comments, you all said she was personable, authentic, inspired, and passionate about what she's doing. So absolutely, you caught that. We will use... Um, trade street jam company throughout this presentation and make some references but wanted to share that with you all too so you can understand the power of google ads so let's go ahead and talk about what the process looks like how this all works so everything starts with the google search which most of us said we have already done uh this morning already so we've already had a google search completed so then Excuse me, one moment, please. I'm so sorry about that. It looks like I had some type of call coming through and I couldn't find it. It wasn't popping up on my screen. So, so sorry about that. So everything starts with a search. We all said most of us have done a Google search this morning already. So what happens is once we conduct the search, Google behind the scenes are creating search results. So it's scanning all of the different web pages, the keywords, the information that's on those web pages, how recently it's been updated, and it's seeing how can I find the best results to put in front of this searcher. So then in addition to them finding those search results, advertisers are then bidding on opportunities to show ads for this search, which that search that happens is called a search query. So that search query in the beginning, Google's algorithm is trying to figure out what can we put in front of this searcher? And then that's where the ads come in. So people who have a related product or service are going to bid to see who can show up for this specific particular search query and then what happens is whoever wins that bid then appears at the top of google within that ads column and then if the searcher actually clicks on the ad then that advertiser will have to pay for the actual um showing and viewing of their product or service by that searcher so let's dive a little deeper so you understand how google ads determines who wins the auction so what Google Ads is doing is it's going to calculate an ad rank for every option, for every auction that is occurring. So what happens is the highest ad rank usually gets that top position um, on the search, and then the second highest gets the next, and so on and so forth. I want to make sure you all are aware of some of the factors that are considered while this ad rank is being calculated. So the first one is your bid. That's how much you're willing to spend to show up um, and rank in this search. The next is the quality of your ad and your landing page, okay? So that's important. You don't just wanna put any type of ad out there. We're gonna get into that on how you can build a solid ad and a solid landing page for your ad. So what happens is Google is trying to ensure that that searcher has the best experience possible from their search trying to make sure that they walk away with their questions answered or finding what they need. You also are going to have a group of factors called ad rank thresholds. And what they do is they set the minimum quality requirements. Those are factors that play into how you rank with ad. 
also the competitiveness of the auction. So if there's a ton of other advertisers that, for instance, take the holidays, um, during the holidays, you probably have tons of small business owners and even larger companies that are running holiday specials or providing some type of gift basket or something of that nature. If that's the case, then that auction might be really competitive if everyone's keyword is Christmas or Easter coming up. So that will play a part into how you show up on the ad rank. Also, the, the um, location and the device that you're using, those actually play a part into how you rank on your ad and as well as the expected impact of your ad assets. These assets are going to help your ad stand out by adding bonus information. For instance, if you run an ad and you have like a really great graphic, which is good, you might want to, you know, use that to draw someone in. You also have the, the option to add a phone number to your ad. So if you're adding a phone number, that might help you um, show up because there's another mode of uh, contact and engagement that you can um, offer to that person who's searching for your ad. So let's go ahead and talk about the types of ads that we're going to focus on today. And the types of ads that we're going to talk about today are text ads. So text ads use a pay-per-click or a cost-per-click pricing model. What this means is that you only pay whenever someone takes an action, like clicking on your website, if that is the call to action, or maybe it's initiating a phone call to your business. So well, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but a lot of times, and I want you all to think about a lot of what we talk about in your everyday experience. A lot of us see ads all the time. We see ads with cute clothes. We see ads, I mean, I have the cutest little puppy in the world through my eyes. So I'm always searching puppy stuff. So naturally things for dogs are gonna show up on my uh, Google search. They show up on my Instagram and Facebook, but a lot of times I see them and what do we do? We keep scrolling, right? So think about that when you're thinking about running your ad. If no one actually clicks on it, then you will not be charged for it. Once someone clicks on it, then you will be charged because that means that your ad was successful in grabbing the attention and getting someone to take the next step to look further into your business. So I also want to point out to you that Google owns sites like Gmail, YouTube, plus more. Guess how many, y'all? Two million non-Google partner websites. That's two million partner websites that your ad can potentially show up on. We like to call this the Google Display Network. So when you run an ad on Google, you also have access to show up on this partner network that we have. It reaches 90% of internet users worldwide. So this slide absolutely dotes on the power that Google has when you're running a Google ad and how far its reach can be. So this workshop is not going to cover the display network in depth, but we just want you to know that it really does add that additional support that uh, you can need to really showcase your business. So I want to ask you all a question, and I think Vicki might have already asked it in the chat, but I missed it. So uh, how many of you have seen a text ad in one of your personal searches before? Type one for yes and two for no. The text ad is the one that usually shows up at the top. Okay, we got a ton of ones coming in. So that's what we're going to focus on today um, is helping you develop a text ad for your business. So let's go ahead and get started with our very, very first topic. This is the zone where you all can actually follow step by step to get an idea of how you would start your Google ad. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to sign into your Google account. One of the things that we like to stress is that you want to make sure that you're signing in and using the Google account that's connected to your business. Um, if you're like me, you probably have several different Google accounts added onto your Google um, 
website. I, I literally have about seven. So whenever you're working in ads, you want to make sure that the emblem for your actual business is the one that's showing up. So you want to go ahead and visit uh, g.co backslash ads. Vicky has actually dropped the link in the chat for you all. So once you get to that page, you're going to go ahead and click start now. So I want to cover a couple very important factors for you all. Um, so you're very clear on what you're getting yourself into before you hit start now. I want you to understand that there are no fees to use Google Ads. There's no startup fee, there's no cancellation fee, there's no minimum commitment, and there's no contract. You can turn your ads on and off as often as you wish. So every new Google account, um, it defaults into smart mode, which creates smart campaigns. And what smart campaigns do is they help new advertisers. And I mentioned this earlier, it's more of the beginner's advertising. Um, it helps them to get quickly uh, set into using Google Ads by automating many of the aspects of the process for you. So we're going to talk about that a little more. So once you go ahead and hit start now, it's going to have you um, enter your business name. So you want to enter the business name exactly how you want your customers to identify with you. And then next, you're going to enter the web page that you want people to visit after clicking your ad. So I'm going to pause for a minute because that's really important. So you don't want to just enter your website. For instance, my website is soleilbrandingessentials.com. If I put that website in there, then it's going to take them to my home page. But if I am running an ad uh, for my uh, flyer services, and I have a special going on and I'm really trying to get people into buying these flyer packages that I want the website address that I use to be soleilbrandingessentials.com backslash flyers. So whatever you want people to see after they view your ad, that is exactly what you want that web page to be. So don't make the mistake of um, just using a general website. Um, it's a part of the strategy and ensuring that that searcher's journey to learn about your product is as seamless as possible. Sometimes it is your homepage and if that's the case, that's fine. But I just wanna make sure you all were well aware that you want to ensure that you use the, the page that you are most interested in delivering to that searcher. So, once you've done that, you can actually preview the selected web page on both mobile and desktop devices. You want to make sure that your web page looks good on whatever device is used and that it's easy to use and navigate and understand. So once you put in that web page, it's going to allow you to actually see um, what it was, what it will look like uh, whenever someone clicks it to visit it. So now we're going to get into the goal portion of it. Now you're going to select your advertising goal. So what are your advertising goals? Like, talk to me, like, what would you want to see? And you guys can just drop that in the chat. Vicki, I'm sorry, I don't have that in there. But just want to start to stir you a little bit. What's your goal? Do you want to get more calls? Do you want to get more website sales? Do you want to sell a particular product? Some of us have um, newsletters that have rich information in it, and that's a, a core way that you identify people connect with your business. So do you want to get more signups to your newsletter? What is your goal? Do you want people to visit your store? You want to have more than one goal, um, but you can write down all of those goals, and we're going to talk in more detail about how you can create different ads for your particular goals that you have, but you wanna make sure that you set your advertising goals. And I see some great ones, more booking and appointments, more customers, name recognition, opt-ins for lead magnets. Yes, Dr. Selena, that's a great one. Um, more clients, more sales. So you wanna keep that in mind as you're creating your ad. So the next thing you wanna do is write your text ad. So this slide is gonna show you the fields that you would fill out in order to write your ad. So I think Vicki has already dropped that information in the chat, but it's showing you how to prepare. You're gonna have three headlines available to you, two description lines, 
uh, your website link that you're going to use. You're going to be able to add a keywords list, your location, and your maximum and monthly budget. So those are all of the things that you're going to need to have an idea about before you get into here and set up your ad. But this particular page is where you're writing your ad. This is where you're filling out all of the information regarding your ad. There is an automatic character count that lets you know how much space you have, and you can also preview the ad on the right side. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you are writing an ad that properly reflects the goal that you set. It also is a strong reflection of your business and your brand, and it has a clear call to action, but we'll get into that a little bit more into our presentation. Keyword themes. So I mentioned keywords just a couple of moments ago. Keyword themes are going to make sure that your ad is showing up in front of the right searchers because the keywords are going to be connected to what they're searching for. For instance, Trey Street Jam um, might have keyword themes of um, jam, fruit, um, small business, woman-owned business, those might be all keywords that might pick up. Um, so what Google Ads does is it will suggest related keyword themes based off of the ad text that you just added, as well as your landing page that you're sending them to. So again, Google's in the background doing that search and scan to pull some keywords for you. You should select themes that describe the focus of your ad and not necessarily everything your business has to offer. Remember, we're focused on the goal of your ad and what you're trying to um, get advertisers. You're trying to advertise to people to, to get from your business. I'm sorry, my puppy is barking in the background. So the next thing you wanna do is select a location. So geographic locations are really important. You can use zip codes, you can use cities or regions, you can use a radius around a particular address. And you will use that based off of what makes sense for your business. You know, if you are a storefront business and your primary focus is to gain more clients in your particular region, then you would wanna make sure that you focus your ad on this region. Now, some of us who have service-based business, we struggle with this, and I just want to address that briefly. Um, I do graphic web design and brand strategy, so I have can have clients across the entire globe. But if I am the Grow with Google Pennsylvania coach, I would love to have clients that are within my area. So if I want to be strategic, um, I might just limit my ad for my flyers overall to the state of Pennsylvania so I can really impact the state that I'm in. But if I want my ad to go to everyone that I can potentially serve, you can absolutely open that thing wide open and you put the entire United States if you want to. So just want to encourage you to, again, be strategic and think about what it is that you want to do and how you want to offer it to potential customers. So this part is, to me, the fun part, because most of us, you know, when we talked about traditional advertising earlier, and traditional advertising is TV, print, and at, to me, I would just see dollar signs when I, when I would see those things. You know, if I thought about running a television ad or commercial for my business, I would just think of thousands upon thousands of dollars, right? Well, this is one of the things I love about Google ads and online advertising, you are in control of your budget. So with a smart campaign, you set your maximum monthly budget. So this should be an, in your control. You should know about how much you have um, in excess for you to spend on marketing. Or some of you all may be at the point in your business where you do have a marketing budget. And if you do have a marketing budget, you can pull down from that and you can set your budget on your own through your Google ads. So what happens is you're gonna set your maximum monthly budget and then what Google ads does is it multiplies your daily budget by 30.4, which is the average number of days in a month. And then that is what sets your maximum monthly budget. 
Um, your ad spend may vary per day, um, but the total ad spend won't exceed the monthly um, maximum that you set. And the reason why it may vary is because remember we talked earlier about the different factors in ad ranking. One of the factors were competitiveness. So if you have midway through the week, somebody else pop up in and they have a similar product and you all have similar keywords, then Google might decide, I want to spend a little bit more today on Jennifer's ad because I see that there's some competition out there and we're going to bump it up a little more. So you might see that the ad spend vary, but it will never exceed your maximum monthly amount. And remember that you are only charged for the clicks that you receive. So even if your maximum monthly budget is $150 and your ad spend is $10, you will be charged $10, not $150. You are only going to be charged for the amount of clicks that you receive. So now that you've set your budget, this is the time for you to review your campaign. You've done everything necessarily necessary to start your ad campaign. So you're going to look at uh, all the pieces that you set up. Make sure there's no spelling or grammar errors. Make sure that your website link um, is operable. Um, your budget is reflective of what you need it to be. Your location is set. And you go back and make edits. And if everything is OK, then you're going to go ahead and move to this final step, which is setting up the billing. So you'll have to put your payment information in in order for your campaign to go live. Um, once your campaign is launched, you're going to have access to some additional features like ad scheduling, which allows you to select uh, the days and times of the, of the week whenever your ads are eligible to appear. Um, this is useful if you don't want to show your ads during certain hours whenever your businesses are closed. So if you know that your work hours are from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, for your restaurant, then you might want to use ad scheduling to ensure that people aren't seeing ads whenever your restaurant is closed. And then this is exactly how you um, set up a smart campaign. It's a, definitely a few steps, but definitely strategic and intentional steps to make sure that you show up the best way. So I'm going to go ahead and see if there were any questions that we had before I move into introducing you all to a more advanced campaign. Vicki, did you notice any questions in the chat? I didn't. Um, comments like what they wanted with the last question they asked, like, what do you want at, to get out of your um, ads? Like more bookings, appointments, get clients. Awesome. But no, everybody, Jessica, I guess everybody's following along. I think mm -hmm. Jessica Moments has a question or, or kind of like a comment about consulting across the country. So hopefully I covered that when I touched on that service-based business. One of the things that you're going to want to do is be aware of your analytics and your data too. So maybe there are specific states that you notice that you always get a lot of traffic to your website from or people are purchasing from. It may be advantageous to run your ad across the entire country or you can choose those several states and focus that ad on them because you, you already have some traction there. So Elizabeth, we always get that question. Um, I'm gonna pull Vicki in for her input. Um, people always ask, well, what's a good amount to start with? You know, um, I would say that if you can budget anywhere from three to $500 a month, I think you would see some impact. But the reality of it is the way that smart campaigns are set up, it's supposed to take that that burden off of us that we feel like we have to have, you know, thousands of dollars available to spend to add. If you only have $150, then, and you're willing to put that out there, put it out there and try it for a month and see what it does. Uh, one thing about marketing, I will say is that you want to give it some time to to work. So I would say more importantly than the amount that you put down maybe the time in which you give the ad to work, which I would recommend um, at least three months, um, if not six months of running it to see its impact. Vicki, do you have any um, input? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to remember when um, the last time I ran an ad, and I, 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 I feel like three to five months, you know, three months, you know, you're going to see some, um, so, some analytics behind it. I also wanted to go back to the question about, um, you know, where the, uh, using Google Trends to figure out where your business is across the, like, if you, you know, I mean, I can do consulting from anywhere in the world, even though I'm in the state of Texas and I cover Texas, and that's really, really what, where I want to be. I could actually um, use the keywords on how to find, you know, digital marketing consultant, pop it into Google Trends and see how many people are actually Googling that. You can drill it down to exact zip codes. So I wanted to throw that in there. Um, but what I'm when I ran my ads back, I mean, back when we started this in 2017, I ran, I ran an, uh, several ads to find out who was visiting, like how people were finding me, you know, my blog and stuff. And I was really, really impressed about, um, the importance is, you know, targeting where your customers are and figuring that out. So like you can, when you're using your, um, the ads, you can drill down again, what areas of town, like do you want it, if you're brick and mortar, do you want them near you so that they can find you quickly? Um, and you, and it, you'll get some great analytics. So just, you know, keep on top of that and see, you know, um, what, where, pe how people are finding you. I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. And just to, to um, piggyback off of what you mentioned about analytics and to Hannah's question about, um, you want more information on like the time of like when to have the ad like show up. So I would say analytics is a great source of how to find the data to support this. Now you can run Google analytics, but if you don't have Google analytics set up yet, definitely want to get you in an analytics workshop. But a lot of your website platforms give you some type of data and insight. Um, even your social media. So if you have social media and if you have professional accounts, it's going to tell you the time of day when people frequent your, your account. Um, even your website, it will give you some ideas around the time of day. That might be helpful data to support when you have your ad run, ran, um, Hannah. So I hope that helps. Um, Amy's asking, do the ads have a positive impact on your Google search rankings? That's a great question. And yes, all of the Google products really do um, marry hand in hand. So um, I would say that having your ads is definitely because the way you want to think about it is the way that Google search works overall is it is looking at those factors I named in the beginning. It's looking on how well you have like solid keywords available. It's looking for the text and context that's written on your website. And those are all things that you're doing well because you're preparing an ad. And because you have an ad, those are all, um, whenever Google search crawls in the back end to find the information, that's all things that they'll pick up to actually um, help your <laughs> search rate ranking. So I do believe that um, having an ad, not having an ad alone, but it's the the basic foundation of what makes up an ad that I believe will influence your search ranking overall because you have solid keywords, strong descriptions, you probably have your business profile set up. All of those things working together help promote your overall search ranking. Vicki, do you have anything on that? No, I think you, you're really spot on. The one thing that I always like to remind everybody is, you know, we get our website done. I'm, I'm right there. Like I, my website's done. And then I look at it, I'm like, it needs a refresh, right? It needs, you should be updating your website content um, frequently, right? Make keeping it fresh because that, um, that takes into consideration as well. There is a, um, free also free tool you can use called google um search console i'll drop that in the in the chat <clears throat> that you can that can help you with the, the website it's kind of like a like so lay said you know i've got your ads you've got your google analytics you've got your business profile your website's up and it's just keeping up with those um to continuously do the fresh content kind of like social media i noticed this if i am off my chica about town like if i because i've been busy and i don't instagram I lose like 
four followers. I'm like, where'd y'all go? It's only been a few days, right? But if they're following you, if they're following your business, it's because they want to know, they want to, they, they like your content. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go ahead and move on because we are just about halfway through the presentation and I want to make sure that I cover the rest of the content. So keep your questions coming. You can drop them in the chat. I know that a recording will be posted on YouTube. So even in the event that I don't get to all the questions today, um, if Joyce will allow me access to the YouTube, I can go into the YouTube and answer some questions in the comments, okay? So the next thing that I want to... Uh, all right, the next thing that I want to focus on, um, we talked about smart campaigns, which the smart campaign is more so the beginner's campaign. It's where a lot of things are automated for you to, to really help support you in launching your ad. But there's also search campaigns. Um, search campaigns are a lot more comprehensive. Um, they are ran in an expert mode where you can see a full range of ad campaign types. So again, remember with the, the smart campaign, we talk primarily about text ads, right? But if you run a search campaign, you are able to um, open up to not only search campaigns, but display campaigns, video campaigns, ad campaigns or app campaigns, as well as shopping campaigns. So this expert mode that you're able to operate in in search campaigns really gives you as the advertiser more control, but it also requires more active management. So um, my recommendation for that is if you are new to running ads, start with the smart campaign, get a couple under your belt, navigate the system, and then you can transition over to expert mode using search campaigns. Uh, this chart that you see here is showing you the difference between the two. So this is a very important slide because it actually shows you the structure of um, a search campaign. So there, again, is a lot more that goes into it. So when you start, you start up on level one, which is your account. This has your general information, your username, your password, and um, billing details and things like that. So that's your general information. And then you move into the campaigns. And if you notice at level two, you have two campaigns running. And I think I may have mentioned that before. So when you're in a search campaign and say you have multiple goals, you might wanna run two different campaigns, one to get more clients and one to get more sales. And then when you go to the third level, those are the ad groups. So in that third level, you might have different keywords for the different types of goals. So say for instance, on the side where you're looking for more clients, you have a set of keywords for clients that are small business owners that you serve. Then you have another set of keywords for clients that are more um, mid to large size corporations. And then you have a whole nother ad group of keywords that are for potential partners. So I hope that me breaking this down helps you to see when you get into the search campaign, it allows you to strategize more and kind of drill deeper into each level so you can see and understand how you can create an ad that would focus on um, what your goal is, but the different um, audiences that you're trying to reach within your goal. So now we're going to look at what this uh, search campaign or expert mode would look like. So what happens is whenever you are in smart mode, that's the default when you set up your account, you'll have to switch to expert mode in order to start a search campaign. So in order to switch, you want to navigate to a new campaign. And if you started in a smart campaign but didn't complete it, you might have to click the back button to start a whole new ad. And then you'll see here at the bottom, it'll say switch to expert mode. And it's asking you, are you a professional marketer? So by the time you run your couple, you know, solid smart campaigns, then you might feel like a professional marketer and you're ready to switch to expert mode. So when you're in expert mode, you wanna start out all campaigns and then you wanna click a new campaign. And then you will select the campaign goal and a campaign type. So in order to go ahead and do that, you are going to make sure that you 
click on that option label search as you see on the slide and then it's going to give you some ideas of what the goals might be and you all have already laid out some goals and that's how you in essence would get your search campaign started up so next we're going to talk about how you can improve your ads overall and this is what with both types of campaigns whether it's a smart campaign or a search campaign. So it's a text ad. We talked about this already. We talked about the um, the automated character limits where it'll shut you off at a certain amount of characters. The headlines have to be 30 characters. Um, when you're in expert mode, your ads are responsive. And that means that Google can show you headlines and descriptions um, in any order. So you write up to three of them in order to um, for, for to give them some variety to showcase, but you can add up to 15 if you would like to. Again, that is if you are in expert mode because it's going to run through your different headlines and titles and utilize them to best position you. So your description lines, this is the line that displays the URL. So it's displaying the web page that you want people to click on. And it also can be only 90 characters. So whenever you are writing this, this is showing you with your, what your text ad is going to look like. Um, it might be different layouts depending on what device is being used. And then you can also adjust the layout if the system is kind of telling you that the ad might perform better. That's one of the things I love about Google Ads is it will give you recommendations on how to better position your ad. And then the URL or that web page, um, it should match the topic of your ad. So for instance, using Trade Street Jam, if a searcher is looking for cranberry jam and they click on your ad and it sends them to the home page and the home page doesn't have cranberry jam, then they're going to be confused and they probably will click off your ad. So we want again to be strategic to make sure that everything is lining up. So here's a couple tips on writing a great ad. So you want to make sure that your ad is relevant to what someone is searching for. So again, if you are trying to, in this case, sell a specific type of jam, like cranberry jam, you want to make sure that you have that in your keywords, you have cranberry jam in the description or in the headlines of the ad and that your web page is going to the cranberry jam page um, versus just jam because any of your jam can show up in that one. Again, you want to make sure that you include keywords in your ad text. So the keyword list that you make, you also want to pull those keywords and infuse them into the descriptions and the headlines that you are writing. And you want to make sure that you have a call to action. What do you want people to do after they click on your ad? Do you want them to buy? Do you want them to join the the jam family, you know, whatever it is, you want to be very intentional about having a call to action. And Vicki has dropped the link for some additional tips on um, how to write the best ads for your Google ads. So we talked a little bit about keywords and we're going to go a little bit deeper into keywords and we're going to talk about keyword themes for smart campaigns. So a single keyword theme represents multiple keywords. For example, if the theme is fruit jam, it means that strawberry, raspberry, preserves, peach jelly can all show up in there. So whenever you are running a smart campaign, that is more so like the beginner's campaign, that theme is going to automate and cover a lot for you, which is really important to know. So here are some tips for keywords. Um, you wanna have seven to 10 keyword themes. Um, if you have too many, then you can run the risk of your ads showing up in less relevant searches. So you want to be specific and intentional and make sure that your themes align with uh, the product or service you're trying to sell. You want to make sure you think like your customers. What would they be searching for in order for your product or service to show up? That is a really game-changing question to answer whenever you are thinking about running your ad. Um, you might want to create separate campaigns for different keyword themes. So um, don't put hot sauce keyword themes in a campaign that's promoting fruit jam. You might want to separate that and run another campaign 
for your hot sauce. And then once it's active, you want to monitor your keyword themes, turn off anything that isn't working well. Um, if you notice that a particular keyword theme is working well, then maybe you can activate a new one that aligns to it. But you want to make sure that you monitor your ad. Whenever you are in expert mode, this is how keywords work here. So it does different matches. So the first one is a broad match. These, The broad match is pretty much one that is going to precisely um, control the search query to match the keyword. So ads that may relate to jam might show up in your keyword. And then a phrase match is more restrictive. It is going to include the meaning of your keyword and that meaning can be implied to whatever it may mean. And um, you add quotation marks to this keyword is a phrase match. So it would pull anything. For instance, jam is a good idea. You know, we know that Trey Street Jam is talking about jelly, but if she puts jam in a phrase and it might be talking about a dance party because I want to get my jam on and that might show up in that phrase because of the word jam. The exact match is where it is the most precise one. So your ads may show up on searches that have the same meaning or the same intent as the keyword and you use square brackets around this one. And then the last one is the negative keywords and the negative keywords are really important. So this helps you to prevent ads showing up that um, might not align with what it is that you are trying to portray. So you put a, a minus sign in front of that to kind of showcase um, a negative keyword, for instance, you know, negative dance. And then that would eliminate a, a, someone saying jam and dance party from the search. And that's how the keywords work in expert mode. So expert mode also has a keyword planner and you can run that planner to discover new keywords, see estimates on a number of searches and things of that nature. Vicky also provided an amazing tool in Google Trends that can help you gather keywords as well. It's an ad assets. So what ad assets do is they just expand your ad with additional info. I mentioned this earlier. So this might be like, having your phone number on there. You might be able to uh, set up call out assets or site link assets, which take people to different pages on your site or price assets that highlights the cost of a product or services. But this happens um, in expert mode where you are able to access different types of assets. Um, in a smart campaign, your assets are set up automatically. So, I'm going to pause and just ask for you all to put any questions in the chat. And I'm going to go ahead and bring to close our presentation. This is the last um, leg of it, which we'll talk about measuring success in the next couple of minutes, just so you can understand how to follow up on if your ad is doing what you intend it to do. But please drop your questions in the chat and we will make sure we address them um, at the close of the presentation. So we talked about setting an advertising goal earlier, and many of you came up with amazing responses to what your goal is. I want you to keep that close to you as you decide on whether or not you're going to run an ad after today. Um, and then as you go along, make sure you have a document where you keep your ads that you're running, the goal that you had. Um, and the success of it. So as you continue on in your business, you can reference back to that document and say, oh, we've done this particular goal before. And around this time of the year, it works really well. So again, you track your data on how you're running your ads and, and its effectiveness so you can make decisions in the future. So I wanna talk a little bit about some terminology that will support you as you are measuring success. The first is impressions. So impressions is how often your ad is shown. I love impressions because it definitely helps you know when you set up an ad that your ad is working. You will usually notice a ton of impressions. And depending on the effectiveness of your ad, you might not have as many clicks as impressions, but impressions are how often your ad is showing up in front of people, right? 
And then a click is whenever someone actually clicks on your ad or initiates a phone call from your ad. That is what you are charged for. Your click through rate um, is dividing the total number of clicks by the number of impressions. And that is showing you how often your ad is click through it is seen and it is click through the higher the click through rate the better and then lastly a conversion is a very important um thing that you want to think about whenever you are measuring success so a conversion is when a click on an ad results in a desirable behavior that you can track so for instance somebody wanted to run ads to get more clients and if their ad led us to the web page where it was to set up a consultation a conversion would be i am the searcher i found this ad i clicked on it it took me to her consultation page what told me that she could revolutionize my business and take it and scale it to the next level and then i click on her link then to set up a consultation. That is a conversion. And those are ways that you can measure your success. Okay, so in a smart campaign, it's gonna give you a report. Both of the campaign types give you reports. Um, it's gonna show you what impressions look like, clicks and conversions. And we're gonna take a couple moments to, to see what this might look like. So in Google Ads, this is, what it will look like in a search campaign, a lot more detail. You can look at your ad groups, your different ads, the landing pages, keywords, and a lot more whenever you are in a search campaign. And as you can see, it will display it in like a chart-like format. So you also wanna track your conversions in Google Ads. So you can go into tools, into setting, and then go to measurement and conversions, and then you can create conversion actions. And then that way you can actually track specific customer activity that is valuable to your business. So if it is, you know, um, you know, clicking a, a link to set up a consultation or clicking the link to make a phone call or to send a follow-up email, you can actually track those conversions. Um, I will say that in this uh, search campaign is a little bit more detail. You might have to put some type of coding on your website in order for that tracking to happen. So if you don't know how to do that, I would highly recommend connecting with like a web developer to have that happen. And then I've mentioned Google Analytics uh, several times throughout our presentation. It is a sure way for you to ensure that you can measure success. So whenever you set up Google Analytics, Google Analytics and Google Ads sing together and harmonize and ensure that, you know, they're tracking the analytics alongside of your performance of your ads and then um, making sure that all of that is you know, flowing together, you know, then your ads will make recommendations based off of what analytics is telling them. Um, you'll see things like the bounce rate, like if there's a certain page that people go to and leave it quickly or how long someone stays on your site. Um, I just launched a website last week and the average time on the website was 10 minutes and it made perfect sense. It's That's not usual, but it made perfect sense because there was information that people needed to read in detail on that site, but only analytics and data can tell me that so I know that it's working. So um, to Hannah's question earlier, analytics, whether it's Google Analytics, I would say use Google Analytics and the analytics of your website um, and your tools that you're using to get a better view on the effectiveness of your ads. All right, well, that is the close of my presentation. I'm going to share some recaps and resources with you all. Um, this is just everything that we touched today. Uh, Vicki's gonna drop the link to a handout that we have that reviews everything. And there's a recording of this as well, so you can watch it back for any information. But before I share the additional resources, I do wanna know, like if you learned anything more about Google ads and you feel like you can go and set up, run and track an ad right now, I want you to type a one in the chat. If you feel empowered to set up your Google ads, 
set a set a one in the chat for me. Um, and if you're going to use Google Ads for your business now or sometime in the future, give me an explanation point in the chat. And if you have any additional information that you've learned or anything that stood out to you today, please share it with me. We would love to hear it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run through a Google tools dump. It's just a couple of tools that can help you to further your learning as you are growing. Um, YouTube is a great one. Our Grow with Google channel is updated every Thursday with multiple topics that can help you grow your business. Career certificates help you take that next step in areas like project management, analytics, digital marketing, and e-commerce is a phenomenal certificate program for any small business owner. I just took it last year. And even as a digital marketer, I learned so much. And then last but not least, google.com backslash grow. That is our quick help where you can find all types of resources available to you. So that is the close of my presentation for today. I want to turn it back over to Joyce. Thank you all for gracing me for a couple of um, additional minutes. I don't know if we have a ton of questions or not, or if we have the time to answer them. I'm going to yield to Joyce, and then we can go from there. So we are. Thank you so much, Soleil. Huge, huge hand clap for you. Thank you. This was a great presentation. We are actually out of time, but Soleil, I was just wondering um, if you want to add your um, contact information in the chat or anyone from your team who could continue to answer questions. As mentioned, we will be providing a link to the recording within the next day or two, so you can go back and review this. Um, yes, Soleil's information, IG, Facebook, all of the socials are in there in addition to the event site. Um, I appreciate everyone's time today, and we look forward to having you join more Webeck East events in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki.